I wanted you to kind of look at, we've talked about the past and the, and the present, and I want you to kind of put your gaze at your crystal ball and, and look at what, uh, or how the LBO industry might change from your perspective. I mean, given the excesses uh, and the changing deal structures and what they've done, you know, taking themselves private and taking large companies private, will that continue? Yeah, the short answer is uh, it, will, uh, it will continue. I think it's, a, it's an asset class that people want to be in. Um, if I had to say you know, to the professionals in this room, is at the end of any cycle, I, I, I think um, my mother once called me up after the end of the uh, equity bubble. And Credit Suisse, you know, I was at Credit Suisse for about 10 seconds. I was at Drexel Burnham. So I've been at the heart of sort of the, some of the problems. And she said, hey, how come you never go to jail? <laughs> I said, thanks, Mom. But, um, uh, you know, I said, you know, uh, interestingly, early on in my career, you know, Drexel, I really say I got a sense of what happens at the tail end of a cycle. Um, and it was really good. I was very young. I was in my 20s when you get to see the power of, of these cycles. And I said it a year ago. I said, this cycle is not going to end like everybody thinks. We haven't yet begun to see emails from trading floors. Um, th it happens. There is somebody down at uh, one of these uh, justice departments somewhere that is looking up on the wall. Oh, I used to say this. Now it's going to not work. But, you know, so Rudy Giuliani was almost the next president, and Elliot Spitzer was the governor. But, um, you know, these were people who started out prosecuting what I think were, were, were uh, well, well, were crimes on Wall Street that they went after, some of which didn't actually pan out to be exactly as, uh, as uh, significant as they went after them. And you got to look up there and go, oh, I got my shot here. Uh, I got my shot. If I can find who was the criminal behind this cycle, I too can be the governor or um, run for president one day. And so I think there's a huge, these cycles have a, uh, an ability to go on and to get more serious. And I would just say, I, I worry, the one thing I worry about is that if we go into a prolonged recession, I'm not saying we will, but if we do have a slowdown, and the current cycle ends up in more problems in portfolios. I remember that we're all representing the teachers and the policemen. We're representing pension money that could uh, not see things like marks that have been kept uh, unfairly uh, up. Um, they could look back one day and say, what everybody says today is, quote, everybody's doing it. At some point, the cycle becomes, uh, so what? And from parking in the late 80s to equity research tied to stocks, hot stocks being given to people in the 90s, the everybody's doing it excuse doesn't hold in the throes of a cycle that people are looking for. Um, how did this happen? And how do we find who's responsible and take action? And so, you know, the one crystal ball, and I'd like, you know, I, I, I feel uh, very serious. We don't know where it's going to go. The economy could continue to face a lot of headwinds, resulting in a default rate that is, I think the last panel said, could go to 15%. And I would encourage everybody to just look at practices they're doing that, quote, everybody's doing regarding marks, portfolio, things that you would not want to look back on and try to explain the emails um, ahead of time. And um, you know, it's advice that five or six years from now, I think, could, could be helpful if if we continue to go through a very difficult time.